I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is someone that I've known for many years, and he truly is a great man. He graduated magna cum laude from Cornell University and received his law degree from Harvard. And needless to say, he's one of our state's top attorneys. He's also chairman of the board for the East-West Center and a great friend of mine. He is Richard Turbin, and today we are going beyond international relations. Hey, Richard. Hey, Rusty, it's great to be here. It's an honor to be on your show. Well, I'm, I'm excited to have you on the show, and I know you for many years because I used to teach tennis to your daughter, Laurel, in private tennis lessons, and now you and your wife, Ray, are my protégés in tennis. Right, yeah, Rusty, you are my tennis guru. <laughs> and it's great to have you as a friend, a tennis guru, and also a guru uh, for my work as chairman of the board Governor, governors of the East West Center and the other pro, other pro bono work I do in my work in my professional life. So thank you for all the help you've given me for very valuable help. Well, I'm excited every time I'm able to, to see you and talk with you, Richard. And I've been wanting to ask you though. You know, I've had some students that attended Cornell. What what was it about Cornell that you liked? What I loved about Cornell, it was really uh, an intellectual you know, hothouse. I mean, I felt it was uh, an academy. I mean, almost I, I kind of envisioned myself uh, going to one of the first great universities in, in Athens or Paris. Yeah. I mean, because it was, you're out in the country, uh, it's far away from any major big city. New York at that time was seven hours away. You're in beautiful country, and there really wasn't anything much else to do other than to study. Uh, to work with brilliant professors, uh, to uh, train my mind, you know, yeah. my intellectual capacity. So for a young student, it was a great experience. Now, I want to ask you, how, how tough was Harvard Law, Richard? Well, it was very tough to get in, ah. I must say that. But once you are accepted as a student, as long as you went to classes, as long as you participated in discussions, you know, you were fine. You know, they didn't try to work you to death and make you, uh, you know, and, and, and um, throw people out of the law school. And what I loved about it most was my fellow students. So many of them were geniuses, brilliant people, interesting people, humble. Uh, it wasn't just, you know, the rich elite that went there. It was really, uh, you know, a law school of, uh, you know, of, of, it was a meritocracy. Yeah, no, that's, and, that's good to hear, I like that. And I wanna know, how did you end up coming to Hawaii? I always had it in my mind. It was something I wanted to do as far back as I remember. As a kid, you know, I loved reading history books and geography books, and there was something about Hawaii that just uh, fascinated me, the d diversity, uh, the bridge between, uh, you know, North America and Asia. And even, I remember in law school, one of my professors, uh, 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 Dr. Leach, he had just come back from the East-West Center. The East-West Center had just started in 1960. And uh, I also, and the fact that it was based in Hawaii, you know, as a bridge between the East and the West, that was another reason I wanted to come. Oh, I love hearing that. And Richard, you have a great family. I mean, I know your kids, Derek and Laurel. Uh, what, are, what are they doing now? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so lucky. They are just a wonderful young people. Laurel is starting her second year as a professor at University of Hawaii. Great. Yeah, she opened up a sustainability, resilience, environmental uh, program. Uh, in the Department of Ethnic Studies at the University of Hawaii, and uh, second year as a professor, working on her first book. Nice. Uh, Derek is coming home to Hawaii from LA, okay. and is opening up a law firm here, Great. a uh, Hawaii office of a major West Coast law firm. 
Gilson and Dobb. And, and so I'm very proud, very proud of both Derek and Laurel. Well, of course you are. And, and Richard, I want to talk about your wife, Ray. I mean, Ray is incredible. How did you guys meet? We met uh, in Hawaii. Okay. I, have, I was a public defender working in the public defender's office for about a year and a half. She just came to Hawaii as a legal aid lawyer through the VISTA program. And uh, I met her in, uh, in, our, in the office. Uh, she was uh, about ready to uh, uh, borrow some snorkeling equipment <laughs> from another lawyer. And I said, oh, this is, a, this is a great woman. She's smart, beautiful, and she's also uh, an avid um, athlete. It turned out that was about the last time she went into the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to say, you and Ray are just so cute together. You guys are perfect together. And and I love you both. And you guys have your own hugely successful law firm, Turbin, Chu, and Height. What, what do you guys, uh, what kind of law do you practice? We represent victims. Uh, primarily, it's a plaintiff's personal injury law firm, which means people who get hurt, you know, hurt oh, mostly in traffic accidents, uh, falls, uh, industrial accidents, uh, victims of malpractice, uh, we represent them and, and try to get adequate compensation uh, so they are fairly compensated uh, for the injury and, and the pain and suffering they, they go through. We really love it. I mean, we're representing uh, the average, you know, the average citizen of the state of Hawaii, yeah. you know, not the you know, wealthy banks or insurance companies. I like to say we, we represent the little people and we try to bring them Justice. And you've been doing that extremely well. I mean, hugely successful law firm. And I want to talk with you about the East West Center now, and you being the chairman of the board. Um, what is the mission of the East West Center? Well, I like to say that the mission is peace fair. I mean, not warfare, but peace fair. Uh, we want to, uh, the, the initial mission was to help. We opened up, you know, 60 years ago in, in uh, 1960, yeah. and our mission at that time, Asia was not the economic powerhouse it is today. It was, it was still, um, you know, still kind of a underprivileged area. And the East, purpose of the East-West Center was to help bring them the, professionals, pro, the professional skills, um, the, uh, uh, the know-how, the infrastructure uh, to help uh, the very talented uh, people of Asia become economically successful. And it sure has worked. Yeah. And so I think we, we helped do a good job. And we also wanted to bring, you know, peaceful relations there. And happy to say that since the East-West Center began, there's been very few major wars in the Asia, in the Asia region, which has helped it become uh, prosperous and economically successful and also to create a better kinship, better relations between East and West, yep. the United States and Asia. Yep. And if I'm going to say one more thing, sure. we've had seven uh, presidents and prime ministers of major Asian countries uh, as East-West Center alumni. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And, and it's located on the UH campus, but it's its, it's, its own identity. And I know you deeply care about the East-West Center, and I know you have great passion for it. Why is that, Richard? Well, um, you know, thinking about what any of us can do uh, to help foster um, a, a better world, a more peaceful world, a more prosperous world. And if I could do my part to help uh, serving as a leader of the East-West Center, um, it's, it's an honor for me, it's a passion, and it's one of my life goals to make whatever contribution I can make to have a safer, more peaceful, more prosperous world. And you're definitely doing that. And you Thank also you. Uh, met with the Secretary of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. How was it meeting with him? It was a beautiful experience. Uh, he was so inspirational. He was the keynote speaker at this event yeah. in Los Angeles that was honoring the East-West Center uh, and its outgoing president, Charles Morrison. And 
and uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, he was such a passionate, inspiring leader, uh, intelligent, articulate, eloquent, and very modest also. No, that's good to hear because I see him a lot on TV dealing with all kinds of stuff with the United Nations. So that's really good to hear. I'm glad you got to, to meet with him. And you also, you also welcomed the president of Taiwan, President Tsai, to the East West Center here in Hawaii. How was it meeting with her? Oh, that was also an honor. It was uh, just such an honor to be able to greet her and introduce her to the audience at the East West Center. And she chose the East West Center to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the uh, United States uh, Taiwan um, a treaty, a relationship treaty, um, treaty of friendship. And it was such an honor for both Hawaii and the East West Center that, that she chose the East West Center as the venue uh, for that great celebration. Yeah. She also, very intelligent woman very uh, 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 a very compassionate, modest woman, and incidentally, a graduate of Cornell, oh, wow. Cornell University. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Now, Richard, you also recently went up to Washington, D.C., and you took up a couple of the uh, board members with you, one of which was our newly retired president of Punahou School, Jim Scott, who's absolutely fantastic and that's going to be a great benefit to having him on the east west center board and you guys met with uh, senator brian schatz that's how, correct how was it up there it was a it was a great meeting and there is um, a, a lot of aloha for the east west center in washington dc and our and we met actually with our entire congressional delegation nice uh senator brian schatz senator Maisie hirono uh congressman ed Ace, um, uh, we met the chief of staff for Tulsi Gabbard also. And it's important to remember that about half of our funding comes from, half of the funding for the East West Center comes from congressional appropriations. Uh, so we need our, you know, Washington being what it is, we need the help of our congressional delegation to get that funding. And since Senator Brian Schatz is on the Senate Appropriations Committee, and by the way, Congressman Ed Case just got appointed to the House Appropriations Committee. Great. Um, that's, that's, that's a big help. That's a big asset for the East West Center. And um, they're cautiously optimistic. Senator Maisie Hirono is also very helpful. They're all very cautiously optim optimistic that we're going to continue with our funding and knock on wood maybe even get it up a bit. Nice, and you know, the, the more I look into what the East-West Center is all about, I mean, it's such a critical, um, you know, meeting for, for everybody to come together because it's, it's not just the United States, but it's the, it's the countries in Asia and the Pacific. What would you want to see happen in the coming years uh, for the East-West Center? Well, um, you know, we have to continue our mission as, as it is. Yep. We, stu we still do a lot of student exchange programs. In other words, a lot of, uh, you know, smart, uh, maybe not so wealthy um, young people from Asia and the Pacific nations, you know, come to Hawaii. They live at the East West Center. They get advanced degrees from the University of Hawaii. We want to continue those programs. We also want to help the State Department do some of the jobs that the State Department can do. For example, the East-West Center was, was quite important in advancing a democracy in the new nation of Myanmar. We also serve as the secretary, as a kind of the United Nations uh, Secretariat for the leaders of all the Pacific nations. Great. So once every two years, all the presidents and prime ministers of the Pacific nations uh, come to the East-West Center um, for very important uh, leadership meetings. In fact, the last meeting, uh, President Obama came because the president of the United States is also a member of this, what we call Pacific Islands Leadership Forum. Uh, so we want to continue that work and we really, uh, we really need to um, work harder as far as helping the Pacific nations uh, you know, with prosperity, with building up infrastructure, 
and also solving the problem of climate change because some of the island nations uh, were losing, potentially losing some of our island nations of the Pacific because of, of, because of the rising of the ocean levels. So we have to help them find new homes and, prob and maybe relocate entire populations. So wow. That's a major challenge. I love hearing about you know, the awareness that you guys have for all of these different situations. Richard, we're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're gonna continue going beyond international relations. Thank you, Rusty. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Richard Turbin. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it, even financial health. We'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the chairman of the board, for the East-West Center. He is Richard Turbin, and today we are going beyond international relations. Richard, you and your wife, Ray, are huge supporters of my book. You I'm, certainly are. Thank you so much. And I wanna ask you, what is it about the book that you like? Well, by the way, you know, yeah. we, got, we bought so many copies of Beyond <laughs> the Lines and gave it out to so many of our friends. Thank you. Um, I mean, without, with all due respect, I mean, I think the book is, is brilliant. And uh, there are so many things I like about the book, both for tennis and life. Yeah. Uh, because as you know, my major hobby outside of work and my pro bono work is playing tennis. Of I course. Just love the game. <laughs> but for too many years, I've also been tortured by it because <laughs> it requires um, excellence on so many different levels. And uh, thanks to you being my tennis guru and the book, I'm enjoying my tennis so much more, yep. and I'm just happier. I'm happier <laughs> playing tennis, and thank God, because I, you know, it would have been tragic if I gave the game up. But I think what I... Mindset I, and perspective is huge, right? Exactly, exactly. When one of the things you emphasize, it's so simple, but we forget it, is, you know, what is a human being? A human being is an animal that can make choices yep. for himself or herself. And that first chapter, when you talk about choices, it's so important because it's really the only thing in life we have control over is making choices. And our attitude, that's the one thing we have control over. So like playing tennis or facing a problem when I'm in a courtroom or facing a problem when I'm serving as in a leadership role, such as chair of the East-West Center, do I get upset? You know, when some little, uh, uh, when I hit a roadblock or, or a speed bump, do I get upset or do I view it as a challenge uh, to overcome? Yeah. You know, as, or as a problem to be solved. And if I can have that attitude, not get upset, but look at it as a constructive challenge. Um, you're so on your way to, I'm yeah. on my way. You're and on your way to your, success. That, that's what Beyond the Lines is all about. Yep. No, that's good. Yeah, it's so much about focus and mindset and perspective. And like you said, having the right attitude. And it's chapter one is the choice is yours. I mean, we all have choices. And some people, they just feel stuck in their situation. But I really want to let them know that, yeah, they don't have to be stuck. They can make a choice to do something better and change. 
And you talked about challenges. I want to ask you, Richard, have you had a major adversity that you have to overcome in your life? Well, I've been, you know, for, uh, let me just say straight out, I've been very fortunate. I'm, I've been very blessed and, and very lucky. Wonderful wife, Ray St. Chu, wonderful children, Derek and Laurel, wonderful friends such as yourself, living in a gorgeous environment, a beautiful state. So I've been, I've been so very lucky. But as far as adversity is concerned, I, I, you know, I'm thinking it, I wasn't so lucky as a child. I probably was because I had overcome some challenges. But you know, be, being raised uh, in the post World War II era in New York City wow. in, in 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 Queens, being raised in Queens, one of the boroughs of New York City, rough environment. Uh, it's personal, but we were the first uh, Jewish family. Uh, to move into this very old neighborhood, okay. and there was a lot of prejudice. There was a lot of anti-Semitism, prejudice wow. against the Jews there, and I had to overcome that. Um, a lot of fights. I, you know, I lost a tooth. I've oh, got no. my scars to uh, as uh, as memories of those fights. Uh, you know, fighting my way to school. I, I felt like I had to fight my way to school every morning. Um, but ultimately, it was. I, I view it as a good experience. I, you know, I had to be tough. I had to stick up for myself. I wound up kind of um, fighting the bullies, helping my uh, family members who weren't as aggressive or physical as I am, helping the underdogs in my school. We had one African-American student, and I stood up for him. We had a retarded student in the class. I stood up for him. And I think I gradually learned that I could handle these challenges not with my fists, but with words. And about the same time, I became aware of the legal profession and how there was a system of justice um, to help out the underdog. And early on, that was my goal, to become a lawyer and, and help other people through our justice system. Well, that makes complete sense to me now because I had no idea about you know, what you have to overcome. And, but it makes sense now that you're, you know, you're a super amazing attorney and you just want to have fairness for all your clients and you want to have justice and represent the law. Now, I want to ask you, Richard, why are you successful? That, you know, that's a, that's a tough question. I, I kind of think about, um, uh, you know, uh, Kurt Vonnegut's book, uh, Cat's Cradle, where he said the, the secret of life is just one step in yep. front of the other. What ha whatever happens, just keep on moving forward. If you just step at a time, make progress slowly, don't give up, you know, be resilient, uh, have perseverance. It's like you've taught me in tennis. <laughs> have, you know, don't be upset. Just keep on moving forward, you know, one step, one step at a time. So I, it's, um, I, I think that's a, that's a good, that's kind of what I look at. Keep on, keep on moving ahead. Follow your passion and, and, you know, do the right thing. You know, sometimes it's, you know, it's easy to take a little, you know, take the easy way out, cheat a little bit, make a bad <laughs> line call. You know, don't, don't do it. You know, do, you know, do the right thing. And I'm not saying don't be a fanatic, don't be a saint yeah. about it. You got to take care of yourself. But, do the right thing and follow your passion, which uh, you're I have, doing. You're which doing. I've done, and and if you're lucky, you'll be successful. <laughs> <laughs> and you so, need to have good friends, good supporters, good family to support you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, and and Richard, you know, we've all received a lot of valuable advice over the years. But what's one piece of advice that that really sticks out for you? You know, I, I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about it. Um, I remember my father uh, telling me once, I, when I was a kid, I really tried to be a nice guy, yeah. and he, and my father told me, uh, Richard, uh, uh, you're a nice person. You're always going to be a nice person. You're always going to do the right thing. So don't be afraid, you know, to, you know, to, to, to stick up for yourself, stick up for other people. You know, sometimes you need to get in other people's faces yeah. and uh, be strong and adamant, maybe even raise your voice, uh, but you're never going, being the type of person you are, you're never going to go, 
you know, beyond the lines, you know, and, and, and do something bad. So yeah. that, was, that was good advice. And Richard, you're also a member of the, the amazing Boys Bunch here in Hawaii. I mean, they're all hugely successful people that's in that organization. Tell me about the Boys Bunch. Well, the Boys Bunch is a group of, of guys, yeah. you know, young guys that, that started this, uh, uh, this kind of very loose uh, club. Um, you know, about 30 years ago, yeah. and they first got together for lunch, I think every Thursday lunchtime downtown, mostly downtown business people, lawyers, etc. And then they started getting together once a week at a local pub, and it's been going strong for about 30 years, yeah. and I'm very happy and proud to be a member. And it's good for, you know, for men, you know, for, for men uh, to get together, you know, by themselves once in a while. Women do that. They yeah. know how to have a sisterhood, you yeah. know, how to have a sisterhood, support each other. Um, so this is a good brotherhood, and we support each other. And we've been raising money. We also uh, uh, put on fundraiser, run fundraisers uh, for Make-A-Wish Hawaii, uh, which helps out, you know, children who have illnesses and challenges and we probably raised uh, well over a million dollars oh, for them for sure. over over all the years. So we, we we do some good. We have some fun. We do some good, and we support each other and have established a a, a good brotherhood. Yeah, and you know I've attended numerous boys bunch events, and they're such a great group of guys. I mean, very successful leaders, and I just love their events. And Richard, before we wrap, I want to ask you one more thing. You're very successful, obviously, and you're a great guy. But what gives you fulfillment? Um, I think what fulfills me uh, is, is helping people. Ultimately, when I'm down, you know, we all get down a little bit, depressed sometimes, and invariably, if I help someone, if I help a, a client, uh, get some, you know, needed uh, monetary sustenance to help them. Um, it just, it makes me feel good. And it, it, it boosts up my spirits. And also, if I can play a good role as a leader in these pro bono organizations, the East West Center, you know, I'm chair of Why Like Kahala Neighborhood Board, if I can bring people together and solve a problem with unanimity, uh, but enable everyone to have the opportunity to talk and express their views. Uh, but if I can help an organization uh, be successful and constructive um, through uh, worthy leadership, you know, compassion and intelligent leadership, I, that's what really you know, you know, gives me the boost. In I life. like it. I like hearing that. Richard, it's been great having you on the TV show today. Rusty, it's been an honor being here. You're such an authentic, great leader, great guy, and totally know why you're successful now. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information about my TV shows and guest speaking, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Richard and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.